Lies of P is one of my favorite games of all time, so I decided to try my first ever challenge run here in Krat. And it was not always pretty. Yes, most of the bosses were tough. Sometimes getting to them proved to be a challenge in itself. Even though I've played it quite a bit, I truly had to get good or die in order to succeed. In this run, I'm not allowed to upgrade any weapons, legion arms included. I am not allowed to use quartz to enhance my P organ. Neither am I allowed to level up. On top of this, I decided to ban the usage of the Perfection Grindstone. Without giving it too much thought, I started as the Cricket class. With the tutorial and the rules of this run out of the way, it is time to get started. I ran through most of the areas, avoiding fights as much as possible. I will include some highlights, which, let's be real, will mostly be me dying. I did also make sure to pick up most handy items and weapons and fight certain enemies that would have useful gear or amulets for me. Since most human encounters are backstab loops, I decided to not include them in the video. The first main bosses in our way is the Scrapped Watchman and King's Flame Fuko. Even though this was not a rule, you will usually see me wielding different weapons for most bosses. I thought it would make things a bit more interesting. The main thing I had to look out for was the Watchman's grab as well as Fuko's devastating slam down fury attack. Besides that, these two are fairly straightforward encounters and I am happy to say that I breezed through them. Things would quickly change from being straightforward to complicated as soon as I reached the cathedral. The first challenge is this zombie type mini boss. In comparison to even the bosses I've killed to get here, this guy was tough. I had fortunately saved up on some thermite, which made things a little easier. When making this video I had still not fully decided on what approach I wanted to have. For future reference I will include some real-time commentary for when I was actually playing and recording, which will be highlighted with this text in the upper right corner. It is unfortunately a little sparse, as I forgot to speak at times. Oops. I'm not even close to a heal. Need to get a good punish here. Yeah, that's good. Oh shit, low on stamp. Oh, I've got no idea about this enemy's timing, so that was kind of lucky. This is all for you, Alidoro. It did get very close, but I made it to Alidoro and picked up a couple of weapons from the boss Argos we've picked up. Now it's finally time for the Archbishop. On my first playthrough I remember that I had a hard time, but it was also sort of the boss that really made everything click for me. Since fights last longer due to the rules we're following, I got to see some things that I've never seen before. This brutal attack where the Archbishop goes crazy and just slides across the room was the first time I've ever seen him use it. My way of approaching the first phase is to try to parry his first two attacks in his combo, then dodge the sweep that he does. It is easy to get greedy and forget about his tongue attack that comes out very quickly. It is really not that much happening during this phase. And by repeating the strategy as I said before, while this time correctly pairing the tongue, we swiftly move into the second phase. The easiest way to approach him here is just to run to the other side, so we can fight the B side rather than Andreas himself. I don't really remember why, but I seemed to have a different idea this time. A very suboptimal one. After taking down the Archbishop, we move over to Malum District and meet up with the Cat and Fox. 
Here we have another mini boss. This time around we're better prepared as we've looted up a lot of various throwable items. For some reason this guy has a crap ton of HP, managing to stay alive after a volley of throwables. My approach was always better safe than sorry, as risking death with all throwables used would make things unnecessarily complicated. After some back and forth, this abomination finally goes down and gives us a very useful amulet. We also stop by the phone for a riddle and pick up a trinity key that will come into play later. At the end of the district we meet up with our main merchant for the rest of the game, using up all our ergo to stock up on various throwables as well as the weapon he has for sale. Now for the infamous Black Rabbit Brotherhood. I kind of like this first encounter with him. The Elder has a nice flow to his attacks and it's super rewarding to land parries on him for easier staggers. There's a lot to be said about the siblings as they come trickling down though. Backstab is the name of the game here and it is very easy to pull off since the Elder basically lets us do whatever we want when a sibling is out. Usually the damage from the small ones are inconsequential, but since we're not enhancing our character at all in this run, every small bit of damage matters a lot. Breaking the Elder's weapon sure helps. I know that I haven't shown that much of the siblings here, but trust me when I say that I need to save all of that energy for when they reappear. Cause oh god, just talking about it makes me feel sick. I need to stop myself there before I start ranting. We get a lot of openings whether we choose to dodge or parry the Elder's attacks. This trident is also something I've slept on. Basically made for this fight. I tried the puppet string to mimic one of the sibling strategy and well, it sucked. Nonetheless, we do a last dance with the sibling that likes to spin around for an eternity. That takes care of the Brotherhood, for now. With the Malum district behind us, we move closer to our childhood reunion with Romeo. Running through this area was smooth, but had a pretty close call grabbing the Vanini collection. As for the fight versus the King of Puppets, there's quite a few attacks we need to watch out for. One of them being this huge AoE attack he can pull off in the first phase. I also had a death that have never really occurred to me was possible, getting pushed into the bombs that he spreads around the floor. And when I first reached the second phase, I got... dunked. Romeo has a bunch of stuff we need to watch out for. Most importantly, I wanted to avoid the fiery combo attack, so I went with a weapon with a very strong fable art in order to pull that off. Having electric blitz versus puppets can also not be underestimated, as our damage was looking surprisingly good. During the first phase, we get the most of our damage in by dodging whenever he does his sweep. Parrying it just results in one getting pushed away, so it is not the best strategy. I have a habit of always parrying his whirly arm slam down, but this can sometimes backfire as he can just jump away right after it. At the end of the day it seems pretty random, but whenever his life bar flashes white there's just no need for more parries, so better to dodge and get that charge attack in. I did also learn that his hurt box on the arms becomes active first whenever he stands up again, so more free damage. I don't feel as confident in parrying Romeo's attacks in comparison to dodging them. Dodging to the left whenever he swings his scythe is the most consistent way that I've found. Using that and getting one or two hits in at a time will be the strategy here. Things did not start perfectly, however.
After a couple of very close calls, Romeo is no more. Bye, old friend. Our path now takes us to the arcade. I was going a bit too fast for my own good here, ended up getting killed by a warm zombie hug. But hey, at least I learned that I can't always sprint past everything. Down in the cellar is another fabulous zombie miniboss. At this point, we're basically always stacked up on throwables, so this one was no issue for us. Halfway through, I stop by the merchant to pick up the electric chainsaw, which is one of my favorite weapons. In the wine cellar, we face off against another miniboss. Every time I've been here before, the doors to the side open up and the zombies gets involved, taking his attention. For some reason, that did not happen this time. I was struck with a little bit of panic and bolted up towards the stairs. Seemingly, he can't go all the way up, or perhaps the zombies came out of the doors. Either way, he was stuck there and got the taste of my arsenal. This got me thinking how tough this would have been if I wouldn't be allowed to use throwables either, perhaps for another challenge run in the future. The remaining distance to the grand exhibition was a easy toss and sprint away, but this is where momentum was about to be stopped. I ran into quite a bit of trouble here. Shield Bro was angry and tossed me down, so now the puppets I had previously ran past were blocking my way. It did not make things easier that I forgot that I had unequipped my weapon. On the second attempt, I managed to sneak past and make it upstairs to the catwalk. Again, I instinctively tried to just rush past, but the bastard caught me with a bomb and I died from the fall damage. That sucked. Shield Bro was not having it and was completely blocking my way to then run me over. This was getting annoying. When I finally made it up again, the sword puppet had decided that none shall pass. All of my hits bounced off the railing, so I decided to give him the good old running heavy attack. It sort of worked, but I had to drag him back to the platform, and then he was insisting on blocking all of my attacks, sapping me off my heels. That guy got promoted or something. At least he dropped a thermite. Thank you, puppet. Round two was about to begin with bomb-throwing jerks. My plan was to give them a taste of their own medicine, which was apparently not possible. No idea why the shot puts are tossed so high up, but uh, whatever, Carla. This time around, I managed to roll through, drop down, and activate the shortcut. Finally. I then tried to sneak up on the gunner, who proved to have ice in the back of his head. He ended up having more HP than I expected and hit me with a couple of shots. I had no interest of trying to get past Shieldbro again. Thus far, the Grand Exhibition has been the toughest area to get through. The last bit was super sketchy. But with some good footwork, I managed to serpentine through the shower of bullets and make way to Champion Victor. I'm not really sure what it is, but I've always really liked this fight. In a world with deranged puppets and zombies, we have but a gigantic old wrestler up here delivering fierce punches and kicks. It's so out there, but I love it. Victor has an awesome rhythm to his attacks, making parries the obvious choice. This results in a lot of staggers and fail attacks, which is very much appreciated because this big boy has a big health pool. Besides the grab, that let's be real has a pretty questionable hitbox, there are a couple of attacks that I really had to watch out for. In his second phase he gets faster, but also has some mix-ups to his previous versions. I thought I was safe after dodging the first charge attack, but he had another quick one ready. The combo of punches also ends differently with a mean uppercut. The plan is to parry most of the attacks in order to get as many staggers off as possible. Strafing to the right also works pretty well to find some breathing room. And to be patient, which is not my strong suit.
I definitely did get impatient a couple of times, but it worked out. With Victor down, we moved to the swamp. Getting through the first section was not too difficult. Enemies really got no idea what to do when you're on a ladder. Getting to the second Stargazer was a bit of a mess. I thought that just running past would work since that is usually both the easiest and best option. But the police puppet was very eager to follow and disabled our safe point. Please leave me be, officer. Oh god, no. Shit! Oh, thank you! <laughs> that was so lucky. Oh my god. With the help of the fantastic security in the swamp, we made it to the Dodge the Balls fun zone. I died more than I'd like to admit here. I also made sure to go through Hugo's dialogue so we could access a weapon in the optional area. The last obstacle of the swamp is of course the green monster. I was a bit worried about this fight, to be honest. The first phase is generally not that bad. The tentacles are a nuisance, but the main issue is the second phase. In my first couple of tries, I died pretty much immediately getting there. There's a lot of attacks that are worrisome, and why all bosses has a one-shot grab, I do not know. The jump attack has a different hitbox depending on where you stand, and getting hit by the first of his two-piece always meant that the second one is going to hit. I know it might not seem like it, but fights are up to 10 minutes long. Victor being around 8 minutes, and the green monster at a total of 9 minutes and 50 seconds. To not make this video 2 hours long and bore you all to death, I obviously had to cut some of it out. But dying after a long fight really started to get exhausting. Alright, boss time. The dig attack I always sprint and roll through. He always leaves himself open afterwards and is a perfect timing to use a fable art. There are two openings during his combo where I can get attacks in, but I need to pay attention to my stamina and choose my openings carefully. I always just winged it with whatever weapon slash handle combo to use as long as it fit the weight requirements, but the choice of the bramble handle in particular worked out wonderfully, as the charge heavy attack covers a lot of distance. Looking really good right now. Oh no, I don't have... Ugh. I don't like standing close to that. Okay, three heals left. Why did he... Why did he get stuck there? You really like stalling today, huh? Come on, stop puking. <laughs> Shit, got caught in that. Alright, good stagger. Out of heals, though. Should get another one here. Let's go for a couple of heavies. Well, that was a bit gritty. It worked out. Very good damage. I got you this time. And... Okay, one heal for the second phase. Okay, not dead yet. Should be good. Okay, two Fable slots as well. Good opening. Let's get behind him here. Nice. No, 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 no. Oh, like that stagger. Avoided the jumping. Oh, oh, oof. Jesus. Nice. Don't know why I pressed the Fable Art. Can I still get the Fatal? No. Okay, it's fine. Unnecessary to heal there. Don't get greedy. Oh. Managed to avoid that somehow. I'm really jumpy. Hmm, missed that again. Do regret that I don't have the flamethrower here. At least we get a free charge heavy. Partial. More heavies for me. Ooh, clutch. I don't know why I did this. Oh. Err. Oh my god. Hyper armored through the first attack. Didn't even know that was possible. Let's use one of these repair tools. Hmm. Get 
behind. Getting sketchy. Alright, good timing. Perfect. Close to one heal. Yeah, that's a good attack. Stay in the middle. Yup. Get behind, get behind. Yes. I don't think I can get the fatal attack. Let's just go for a fable art. Yup. Nice. Getting sharp with those. No way. That was weird. This is really weird. Why is he getting stuck? What's happening? I don't know if I, I parried? I don't know what happened. <gasps> Shit, let's dodge. Heavy. Should be close to a stagger now. Or a real one. Another good attack. Stay in the lane. Yep, there it is. You make oh yes. Come to Papa. Another one. Oh, finally. Holy shit, that was tough. That was really tough. After finally defeating the monster of the swamp, we're back at Krat Central Station. Just like I did with the robber weasel, I did with the rest of the area. This is also the only Trinity door we will open as it contains the plus one carrier amulet giving us a much-needed weight for better gear. In the crowd outskirts, our path is yet again blocked by a mini-boss. I got a little bit greedy and tried to finish him off without throwables, but Mr. Insane tracking on Fury Attack said hell no. At the start of collapsing crot, I wanted to see if I could even destroy one of these disruption crystals. And well, it got really freaking close. Luckily, there's no real need to kill them. Something that needs killing, however, is this brick brain zombie that slaughtered me first time coming in. This guy is way faster than most of the mini-bosses, so it was difficult to get him down with just throwables. He got pretty close, but our path forward to the Walker Evolutions was now clear. The only thing that caught me off guard here was that the Walker can conjure up another illusion during the fight. Pretty unfair. I was so happy about making it this far in one of my first tries, only to get overwhelmed once again. The fight in itself is pretty straightforward. Parries are very good because it's easy to stagger this creature. Strafing to the right dodges most of the attacks and it's easy to get free hits in. Whenever a stagger is good to go, the walker will always move away and try to do a shout that deals some damage and knocks us back. With this big of a weapon, it was pretty easy to dash up to him and get the stagger off before he could finish. This is the main gist of the fight until it conjures up an illusion. It does suck when he manages to get the shout up though, since it also removes all of the stagger damage that has been built up. If it goes off, it also builds up a lot of disruption, but it never got to the point that I died because of it. Even though I got hit at times, I still managed to get a lot of parries off, breaking the knife in his left hand. When the illusion comes out, I notice that the main guy doesn't do much if there's enough distance between you. If you are in mid-range, however, it can get pretty scary. The illusion is also really susceptible to stagger. Just a few attacks and parries are necessary to get big damage in. A lot of parries later, the second illusion comes out. By this point, I got all my fable loaded up and ready to go, so I tried to do the same thing that I did the first time. 
The main joined the fray, but I still managed to find an opening for the charge attack and finish off the illusion without losing too much HP. Should be this guy down. Oh, it seems like he used a the shout there as well. Perfect timing. Really need to get a repair off though. That was not what I wanted to do. It's fine. <laughs> I broke both of his weapons. That's cool. I really need to get this repair off. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, good attacks here. Save some stamina. Perfect. Yup. Walker of the Illusions down. With the Walker defeated, we immediately run into the Corrupted Parade Master. Just like many bosses before him, he also has a grab that one-shots if it lands. Decay can build up quickly here too, so it's something to be careful of. But the biggest threat is his Fury attack that covers a lot of distance. In comparison to previous bosses, this guy is not that bad. I also decided to try out the City Spear handle for the first time ever and put the Fire Knife on it for more damage. Yeah, this is fast. I really like this spear with the with the fire handle. A bit unfortunate that we don't have full fable though. Oh, that sucked. Need to pop a heal here. Damage is really not that bad. Perfect. Let's prepare for a charged heavy. Now. Need to repair. Buff up. It's gotta be big damage. Burn as well. Hello little Groot. I'm not gonna be able to kill you, right? Yeah, you region way too much. What the? Okay, that's impossible. You're annoyingly in the way, though. Can you get out of the way, little Groot? No! Oh, thank god he didn't start crawling. Could have been bad. Got a heavy here. Oh, got hit at the end. Unfortunate. Dude, what the hell is that about? You stood up. You stood up. What was that mix up? <laughs> Why are they so synced? That looked really funny. I got no stamina. Need to be a bit careful. Slow things down. I'm gonna get out of the wall. Not terrible stamina management. Oh no, 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 no. Dude, that was way too close. Oh, nice. Perfect. Let's buff up now. Got a third one coming in. Oh my god, I don't know why I got hit by there. Now we have no stamina. Should people take him down here? You guys are not dead? You actually stay alive. Okay. See ya, boys. Spooked me out there. Now for the most tedious and kinda boring fight in this entire run. The Black Rabbits Returns. Most of the fight is just a waiting game for a good backstab. That is, when one is not getting grenades or knives in the face or getting pulled to the other part of the arena. On normal playthroughs, I never really thought that this fight was that bad. Holy shit, was I wrong. I walked in here with so many different weapons and different ideas, sometimes dying way sooner than the try just before it. It takes a long time to patiently backstab all of the siblings to death. Openings that worked one time does not work the other, and so on and so forth. 
This is the fight that I died the most in, and it got me to question if I was ever gonna be able to pull this run off. There is some free backstabs to get. Whenever a sibling switches out with another, they stop for a couple of seconds and buff up their weapon. This is the easiest opening to get, and is what I really had to cash in on. When I consistently started getting to the last phase, it ended rather quickly, because, well, I was not used to the Elder's moveset. This would normally not be that big of an issue. Just getting past the small rabbits felt like a new minigame every single time I took a step into the arena. If there is some sort of recipe for this fight, please feel free to let me know, because I was close to going insane here. Not to even mention if one of the siblings was still alive when the Elder comes out. Oh my, I got knocked out faster than I could think. I absolutely had to have the parry timing on the Elder's Fear attack on lock, and I was really only given one chance at a time. Oh man, it feels so good to get that off my chest. Sorry for the rant. What felt like 100 tries later, here's the fight. No, you're coming to me. Come here. There we go. Okay, that's good. That's the most annoying one out of the way. Jesus, that hurts. Oh, I have to dodge that. At least these two are pretty easy to get backstabs on. Oh, that was not a backstab, okay. Not that either, okay. Feels like they're gonna be swapping out soon. Okay, one more. Have a buff ready to go as well. Big damage here. Should be down in one more backstab. Yeah, I love that attack. Feels like no damage, but it's so annoying for some reason. Can we finish her off here? I think so. One more. Nice. Okay. Alright, big bro. I am ready for you. I will be here for an hour, but you will die. I am not doing this again. There's no way. Okay, avoid that. Perfect pure attack. Nice. And then we'll run. Just take small openings here. One hit at a time. I don't care how long time this takes. I'm a bit low on stamina. This is greedy. Can I get one more? Oh, this is bad. I got no stam. Yep, there we go. Good block. One more heal. Oh, it's like the first dagger I've ever gotten on you. Wait. Oh my god. No. No. Oh, he has that wake up thing. I completely forgot about that. No point risking and attacking him before we get this. Big damage. More crits. The rest of the fight is a repeat of this slow but effective process. Only going in for damage whenever there's a clear opening and dodging the hell away as soon as he starts going rampant. Let's fast forward a little bit. Couple of more pokes and he's done. Can I please kill you? Please, 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 please. Oh. I don't ever want to see you guys again. Jesus Christ. Yep, I was in bad shape at the end there. But one might say that my humanity was restored after finally getting over that obstacle. Lucky for me, the next boss in the Door Guardian was a freebie. Even with no weapon upgrades or stats, the damage was still good enough to get rid of him in three fatal attacks. In the Abbey, there was no point at all to battle any enemies. So the strategy, as you've probably guessed by now, was to sprint past everything. It sort of worked. But there was a lot of lying or dying, to say the least. Eh. 
I knew that I could skip the fight versus the cat as well as the fox if I brought cold coin fruit, so that is what I did. Didn't feel like battling more human type bosses after the rabbit gang. This run is about beating the game, not killing all bosses after all. This baby puppet was an issue, but I had an idea. I figured I could grab his attention, run out to all the zombie enemies and hopefully get them to fight each other. It worked out beautifully. He even died after a little while and gave me a quartz as proof of it. With most of the abbey behind us, we make way for Laxasia. I was really looking forward to this, especially after getting a bit demotivated after the rabbit gang. For this fight, I needed some planning. It was clearly visible from the get-go that going with only physical damage would be underwhelming. In this direct comparison, we see the fire sword dealing around 1500 damage, while the more regular sword only dealing 1200. I decided to fuse the two together for the absolute defense fable art. That would give me a very strong opening after she comes crashing down at the start of the second phase. The first phase was not too big of an issue. The only thing that caught me off guard was when she switched up her timing on the grab attack. It's hard to say why and when this happens, but getting caught by it would always mean my demise. And there was enough of demise coming my way in the second phase. Oh boy. In comparison to my first playthrough of Lies of P, I really had to fully understand the boss attack patterns and have a decent idea of how to deal with them. Tanking through attacks and relying on heals is simply not an option. Even though I got closer and closer, there was still a timing or attack coming my way that I was not ready for. I truly had to get good. Or lucky. Either works. In the first phase, she does a lot of attacks that are punishable. Every time she smacks her sword down, gathering lightning is a charged heavy attack for me. Sometimes even two. We have to do everything we can to get as many staggers off as possible, since that is the brunt of our damage output. I did also equip the Pandemonium Legion Arm to get more damage in during staggers. As you might have noticed by now, I always move a bit during successive parries. That way my stamina regions up slightly between attacks. I know that I haven't used any throwables on bosses up until this point, but this is really where they get their money's worth. Maybe someday we'll do a run without him, but not this time.
I got so excited that I almost died to a lightning ball at the end there. Such an awesome fight. With Lexasia down, we free Sophia from her shackles. Looks pretty ridiculous with a Pandemonium Legion arm equipped. Bye bye, Sophia. See you in the DLC, perhaps? Maybe? Please? I know that we're running tight on the boss on boss action here, but there really was nothing interesting to show from the rest of the Upper Abbey, besides me running past everything. We're down to the final two. Damn. What a ride it has been. Simon Manus is in theory the last boss, but you didn't think I'd stop after this one, did you? The first phase is basically free versus Simon. There's a lot of stalling going on, but we built up some patience. Sort of. The stalling does continue in the second one, but there's also a lot of random BS that can get me killed. Out of all things, I did not expect to be killed by his god arm smacking me in the face. Oh well. I also had a hard time getting used to the speed of his shockwave thing he sends out. I always expected to be faster for some reason. This fight is all about dodging. We only parry if we absolutely need to, which is pretty much only fury attack. He can start doing this very long combo that has a weird hitbox if you're close, but besides that, it is really straightforward. The best way I found to deal with these disruptive orbs is to run past Simon, then dodge to the side. Works every time.
looking back at this, I took such an insane risk at the end there. But I can't do anything than applaud myself for that decision making as it got me the kill. Simon Manus eliminated. Now for what we've all been waiting for. The Nameless Puppet. As you might expect, I saved my favorite weapon combination until the very end. And it just so happens to be extremely effective. I can't even start to describe how much I love this fight. Even more so than the two previous times I've been here. In comparison to Simon, this is incredibly honest, with a lot of possibilities for parries, dodges, as well as attack openings. He has a lot of mix-ups in his combos, and it feels unbelievably rewarding to punish them accordingly. At this point, I had the first phase down to a science. That said though, the second phase messed me up real good. Even if I consistently got to it, with all my heals available, one mistake meant death. Usually quite a quick one at that. Did I bite off more than I could chew? No way. I knew I could do it.
I had done it. Admittedly, I was close to quitting a couple of times through this run, but I am so thankful that I didn't. I guess it's safe to say that my first challenge run ended up being a success. And if anything, this run got me to love Lice of P even more. As said before, this is my first ever challenge run, so I would love to hear what you guys thought of it, and the way I approached making the video. It would have been awesome to stream all of this. Maybe that's what I will do in the future. If you've got any ideas for future challenge runs, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, as I have a lot of ideas for the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.